<laughs> Nippon Wandering, I no longer have any use for you because baby, I'm going to Japan! So if you may or may not have already heard, I went to Japan recently. Yes, this is why the Germany video essay still hasn't come out yet. This is a country I have been yearning to go to for a long time now, and thanks to the J League, my dreams finally came true. So, of course, a big thank you to the J League for making all this possible. And speaking of, me and the J League have been working together on an ongoing series about the culture of the league itself. So, if you're interested in finding out more about not just what's happening on the pitch, but also off it, there will be a link to the whole playlist for you to enjoy in the description. It would also mean a ton if you guys checked it out, that way we can do even cooler projects with the J-League in the future. But without further ado, welcome to Japan everyone. It was around 9.30pm when I landed and I had been in the air for like 14 hours so I really wasn't going to do much that night. But I did want to walk around and explore just a little bit before crashing. I, I, I'm still just kind of in disbelief right now. I mean right now I'm just kind of in like the Haneda area like you can kind of see like the hotel I'm at right now. So it's nothing like too crazy. Um, but just the fact that I'm here is just like, god man. I've been dreaming about this for like two years, so this is crazy. Yeah, 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 we already know. Oh look, a family mart. What's a family mart, you may ask, and why does it have the same colors as Sierra Leone's flag? Yeah, I don't really have answers for that second question. Family Mart is one of the most popular convenience stores in Japan. Tons of different food options, all that are convenient. There's also drinks, not only served cold, but also hot. And don't forget about the ice cream. I really had to stop myself with the ice cream at times. And then you also have food that's just served right at the cash register. And this is where the glorious Family Mart chicken resides. Now for a long time, I've always wanted to try the fried chicken here. Mainly because a certain Chris Broad has been hyping it up for years. So you know, I had to see for myself if it was really that good. And the results? It turns out... <laughs> I forgot to bring my wallet with me. Oh my god. Well, Holly, you're finished. All right, uh, we're back in the place. Let's grab the wallet. Let's go. Oh me, oh my, look at this beauty. Here is the moment of truth. I have been waiting for this day. So it was like... Mm -hmm. Oh my god. of the real shit. This was legitimately the greatest fried chicken I've ever had in my entire life and was only a dollar 47. That is <laughs> that is, has to be illegal. Morning everyone. I didn't realize checkout time was 10 a.m. so I had to frantically leave as soon as I could. And to my next accommodation we go. A hostel in Shinjuku. Shinjuku is a ward practically on the other side of Tokyo, about an hour away from Haneda. But as you've heard countless times from quite literally everyone, the public transit here is absolutely godly, so it's really easy to get where I need to be. It was a bit of a pain taking four different lines and lugging this around, but whatever man, I'm in Japan. Look at the cool views. By about noon, finally got to my new living space. I love it. A little later, I got my first proper Japanese meal, a gyudon bowl at Matsuya. Oh yeah, fun fact, Matsuya was in uh, Yakuza 3. After my delicious meal, finally went and did a little bit of exploring, but not before I got fixated on quite literally every small street in Shinjuku. It just felt pleasant walking down these streets. They're compact, surrounded by convenience stores, local bars, and restaurants. In general, it's just very people-friendly. Here's one of my favorite streets, it's right outside my hostel, and here it is at night, where it looks even cooler. I know it sounds weird to feel this way about Japanese streets, but you gotta understand, I live in a place that looks like this. Anyways, here's everything I saw my first day. I went to the Tokyo Metropolitan Building for the views, and also they had some 2020 Olympic medals. Actually, I actually have a friend who won one of these golds in the Paralympics. Then I went to Shinjuku Chuo Park, which was right outside the building. Lovely little park, nice hangout spot for skaters, rollerbladers, people who just want to have a nice relaxing time. Also, I met a dude who does freestyle football here, so that was pretty cool. Then, at night, I finally got to live a dream I've had for years. Walking around the city lights of Kabukicho while listening to City Pop. Now I know what some of you sickos are saying. Oh, Kabukicho, huh? I know. But listen, the first time I ever heard about this place was through this anime. And all I thought was, wow, these neon lights are really cool. I want to be in the middle of them. It honestly wasn't until like a year later that I learned what Kabukicho was actually. And now it makes more sense why the anime took place there. So yeah, while I will probably never beat these allegations, I just simply wanted to walk around the pretty lights and listen to Plastic Love by Maria Takeuchi and remember Summer Days by Anri. 
and god damn it, I did just that. Now while I was there, I also had one other goal. This right here is my City Pop playlist. I've had this for like three years now. And the cover is an image of the neon Kabukicho sign that I found off of Google. And I told myself if I ever went to Japan that I'd take a picture of the sign myself and replace the cover photo of my playlist. Here's the before and the after. I know a lot of you love City Pop just like me, so if you're interested in this playlist, there'll be a link in the description below. I underestimated just how jet lagged I was and actually fell asleep at 8. But that was honestly a bit of a blessing, because then I got to wake up really early and then hit up the famous Tsukiji fish market with a couple friends I met at the hostel. I was stupid enough not to take any photos, but there's plenty of cool looking photos that I took here. I'm a poor excuse for a vlogger, I know. Now, while your mouth waters over this image of delectable A5 meat with sea urchin on top, I wanted to mention that while I have no physical evidence of this, the first football shirt I saw was at Tsukiji Fish Market. And which team was it? Charlotte FC. I know you think I'm making this up for an excuse just to mention North Carolina, but I'm not. You can no longer question it. We are simply the largest club not only in MLS, but in the world. Shortly after though, I went to Sensoji Temple, as it was pretty close by. This temple was actually bombed and destroyed during World War II, but was rebuilt later and became a symbol of rebirth and peace for the Japanese. Sensoji is also one of the biggest tourist attractions in Japan, so I'm not gonna really waste your time here and say what everyone else will say. But if you do come to Japan, make this a must because it's genuinely a breathtaking temple. Also, go to all the food stalls. Then after that, I went to Asakusa Underground Mall. Nothing was open at the time, and I kind of regret not taking any cool photos here because this, I mean, look at this place. It's a perfect setting to have some hard ass photos. And here's our first football team poster of the video. I'm gonna be highlighting every single one of these I find because I'm a nerd. Now, Katsu SC is a club based in Katsushika City in Tokyo that plays in the Kanto Soccer League Division 1, the fifth tier of Japanese football. But the cooler fact about this club is the fact that the current president of the club is Yoichi Takahashi, the mangaka of Captain Tsubasa. So after some time in Asakusa, I then went to Harajuku, saw a... Goku burger. <laughs> but yeah, Harajuku is well known for fashion, so you'll see a lot of people who look like Instagram models here. Here is my best finds, a 1998 Japan goalkeeper shirt. True beauty. But let's zoom on that price tag. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, what do you know? It's overstimulation. Next up, I went to Ginza when it got dark, mainly because there's lights and I wanted to listen to City Pop while being around them. But also, there's the six-story Uniqlo store, where I got this sick-looking shirt. This is like one of my favorite shirts now, by the way. Oh yeah, it's probably a good time to talk about my biggest culture shock, which I first encountered at a Uniqlo. No, it wasn't the language, the culture, anything like that. It was Snoopy. I had no idea that Snoopy was like a celebrity here. But I mean, like, it, it kind of makes sense because Japan does love the cute stuff and S Snoopy is a cute little dog. But as someone who used to watch Peanuts all the time as a kid, I don't think most of the Japanese public are aware of the fact that Snoopy is a menace. Take, for example, the multiple times he mistreated Charlie Brown for no reason. There was also the one time he invited his brother to an ugly contest. And don't even get me started on what this was. <laughs> Anyways, to finish the day, I had a little night out. Usually when I go out, I usually avoid my phone just to, you know, make sure I don't embarrass myself online. Stop, stop looking at that tweet. I didn't really do as much the next day. Had conveyor belt sushi for the first time. I'm not even really that big into sushi, but everything was so good. Next was Shimo Kitazawa, a bit outside Shibuya. Most people go here for the vintage clothes. I went here because this is where Bochi the Rock takes place. And then finally, I got to see Shibuya Crossing. If you are planning to go to Japan for the first time, make sure you only come here at night. It just looks way better. Trust me. And those who want a cooler view of the crossing, sure, there is Shibuya Sky, but a cheaper and better option is Magnet. Plus, you get a beer with your admissions, so that's pretty cool. Shortly after that, I had another night out, and uh, this is the only image from that one. I have a very unhealthy obsession with these. I don't think I've gone a single day without eating at least one of these. It's it's really becoming a problem. Maxwell, like you're literally in Japan, you should probably be having like other food because you know, this is well known for the food. Yeah, I'm getting Family Mart fried chicken for like the past four days. I, listen, okay, I, I, I gotta really just figure things out here. Again, didn't do too much this day as I woke up at 11 again, but look, it's, it's the famous cat. 
I'm really bad at tourism. Now, one thing I love doing anytime I travel is finding a place to view the entire cityscape. I know, I'm really unique like that. No one has ever done that before. So next on the agenda that I was entirely winging, I went to Sunshine 60 in Ikebukuro. Sunshine 60 was completed in 1978 and was actually the tallest building in all of Asia until 1985. Nowadays, it's not even in the top 300. But to get to Sunshine City, you have to go through the Sunshine City Mall connected to the skyscraper. And while I was there, I guess I ran into a Japanese idol group's debut. Back home, I have a tiny little balcony that I'll go outside to really just slow down my life a little and to appreciate everything I have and dream big as I look into the stars like a little kid. I've done it since 1000 subs and so thinking about that balcony back home while sitting here looking down at the endless sea of buildings in complete awe thinking about how far I've come, it all felt so surreal. So magical. I know people talk about Tokyo Sky Street all the time, but honestly, Sunshine 60 has the best view, because you quite literally get to see from afar both the Sky Tree and Tokyo Tower, and the rest of the Tokyo cityscape. Also, this place is pretty underrated with how good the vibes are, and there's not really that many people that come here. The people that do come here though, majority are couples, so I was like the only single person there. But I didn't care, my ass was too busy being entranced by the cityscape. That said though, I did think to myself a lot that this would be a really good place to take a girl. Too bad that'll never happen. You know, in my nearly 23 years of life, I have never gone to like a crazy ass theme park, like one of the, you know, like a Disney World's never been there. Everyone's always like, oh, you've never been to Disney World? No, no, it's, it's never interested in me. But here I am at Universal. I'm here from Mario World and only Mario World. Yeah, here from Mario World, but I didn't even get the right ticket, so I had to enter a raffle. Luckily, I don't know how, but I was chosen, so my childhood wonders were not spoiled. Now, I used to be obsessed with Mario as a kid. When I was eight years old, my parents would often take me to this restaurant in Galveston, Texas called Luigi's. The name was the only reason why I liked this place so much. I'm not as big of a fan nowadays, but man, I was giddy. The Mushroom Kingdom, Peaches Castle, Bowser's Castle. You could even interact with the question mark blocks. There were so many things happening at once. It was like you were sucked into a live action Chris Pratt movie. You ride the Yoshis, you could do all this kind of stuff. You could do the Mario Kart thing. I didn't get to do the Mario Kart thing, but man, this was so cool. And like on top of all of it, you got the Mario soundtrack playing in the background, which just really completes it. Honestly, this was, this was so cool. And just, you know, it just awakens that inner child in me. Maybe this is what the Disney adults feel. Anyways, if you plan to go to Osaka, definitely go here. It was a pretty short day because most of my time was at Universal, waiting to get into Super Mario World. But after that serotonin spike, I ended the night off at Torikizoku, AKA Yakitori Heaven. I'm not exaggerating when you will enter another plane of existence when you have this particular skewer. Boys, today is a good day because you know what? I'm finally paying attention to football again. Osaka Derby is today. We got tickets for it, so I am super excited. We're just going to the stadium right now, so I'll just uh, keep you guys posted. <laughs> J League games really put an emphasis on their match day experience, so I went to the stadium like three hours before the match to soak it all in. And one thing that stood out to me was how the stadium is just surrounded by a giant park. So everywhere you look, there's people going out for morning jogs, kids playing football in the fields. In general, it's just a nice place to hang out whether you're going to the game or not. In Charlotte, this simply doesn't exist. You know what surrounds both a stadium? A four lane road. It is kind of funny to me, you just got like a whole stadium park and then just like a shrine over here. Fair play, Japan. Oh my god. Over there you can see the Gamba Ultras going absolutely mental. I'm sure it's said so it's somewhere on the other side. Uh, honestly, I'm not too sure. I'm just making assumptions here. Uh, as you can see, Brazilian flag spotted. I mean, as you know, J-League uh, has a lot of Brazilian players. Gamba has two that uh, play a crucial role in them surviving, or at least they're close to surviving at this point. Nobody jinx that. Look at these apartments over here. 
decked out in Cerezo, Osaka. And then they just got like the perfect fucking view. Look at that. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. You've probably heard one way or another that the food at J League matches is both cheap and also on a completely different level. The only thing that comes close to J League food in America is the Martinsville hot dog. But here's just a quick reminder. We are in Osaka, and Osaka just so happens to be the kitchen of Japan, which means I was in heaven. Mm. Oh wow. That's good. <laughs> And we finished all that just in time for the match, the Osaka Derby. You might be curious to know if there is any particular history between these two, but it's really just location based. Serezo and Gamba are on opposite sides of Osaka. That's it. God, I love Japanese football. Anyways, the ultras of both teams were already active 30 minutes before the game. So we got to witness a little back and forth battle between the two. Wait, 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 shut up. That's my jam. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record the pitch, but I did get a lot more footage of the incredible atmosphere. So that was that. In the end, Serezo Osaka won 1-0 in the first ever J League game I went to. A massive thank you to Serezo Osaka for the incredible hospitality and tickets for this spectacle. Thanks to them, I really got to see how the club is strongly connected to the community and the city it represents. Truly was a heartwarming experience and I had a blast. One more thing by the way, watch out for 21 year old Masayashi Bayama in 2024. So after knocking that off my bucket list, I went to a bar crawl later in the night to experience that famous Osaka nightlife. And as it was Halloween weekend, and I had to wear a costume. Boys, I don't usually do these types of games, but there is a Bochi plush, and I I need that now. That's happen number one. I've never even done these things before. This is not gonna go well. But I just like okay, and then. Let's have number two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. Beep. I just want the bochi plush. Give me the bochi plush. Come on. Is it? it oh, oh. I can't move it that far. So it's just like I. I so that I like, do that and ho hope it works. Wait, 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 wait. That's it. That's gotta be it. Attempt number six. Let's go. <laughs> Kill me. Try that. That was literally the same way I've done it every time so far. Come on. Okay. We're getting somewhere. I can feel it. Attempt number seven. That's like lucky number. Grab. 
I think I f***ed it up, actually. And then grab it like that. Yes. Yes. I feel this one. Attempt number nine. Oh, that's not. That's definitely not. That was, that was just a waste. That's gonna be Hold it. Up, please. <gasps> You know, if I put this much effort into something more productive, like, I don't know, talking to women, you know, I feel like I'd maybe have a little more success than what I'm currently having. I, I literally can't even grab it anymore. <laughs> I can't, I can't. <laughs> this is lots of tennis. I literally don't know what I can do here. <clears throat> I, yeah, no, it's it's over. It's over. It's it's so over. <gasps> oh, hold on a second. Attempt number. I don't even know. Come on. I can't really like move it elsewhere. So it's just like a matter of whatever happens here, happens. Actually, I could have. <gasps> We did it. We did it. They didn't believe in us, but we did it. I'm, I'm so happy right now. So after some shenanigans in Nipponbashi, aka Osaka's version of Akihabara, I decided to visit something a little more traditional. I didn't get to go into Osaka Castle because the missions closed by the time I got there, but I didn't really care too much because I still got to see it up close, and then also the sun was setting, so all the lights started popping up, and it looked even cooler. Since we're on the topic of Osaka Castle, though, here's one of the hardest images I have ever seen in my entire life. This was Nippon Life Stadium, home of the Osaka Kintetsu Buffaloes, who played here until 1983. The stadium was then demolished in 1997, which is honestly such a tragedy because what a striking backdrop this was. And here's another image. It's the line that I had to take back from Osaka Castle. To end off my last day in Osaka, I went to the famous Dotonbori Canal. This is where you'll see the iconic wall of neon advertisements, including that famous Glico Man. And pause real quick, because that is our second football team poster of the trip. This is Osaka FC, and as seen on the poster, they are based in Higashi Osaka, a city to the east of Osaka. The club was formed in 1996, and has risen all the way up to J3 League. But even more impressive was their 2-1 upset versus local rivals Sede so in the 2015 Emperor's Cup. But I'm not done with Osaka sports lore just yet. In baseball, the Japan series was going on while I was in the city, Oryx Buffaloes vs Hanshin Tigers. And there's quite the history between Hanshin and Dotenbori Canal. After winning the Japan series in 1985, Tigers fans went absolutely wild around Dotenbori. And in celebration, supporters screamed Hanshin players' names, which was then followed by fans resembling each player jumping into the canal. When fans got to Randy Bass's name, however, there was no one Caucasian in the crowd so the fans instead threw a statue of Colonel Sanders. That was a grave mistake, however, because this put a curse on the Hanshin Tigers. For the next 24 years, the Hanshin Tigers would not win another Japan series, which then prompted searches to recover the statues in hopes that the curse would be lifted, and in 2009, they finally recovered what was left. Then, 14 years later, in November 2023, Hanshin finally broke the curse in Game 7 of the Japan series. This is the only time I ever talk about baseball on this channel, by the way. <laughs> Before I would go back to Tokyo, there was one more thing I wanted to do. About 20 minutes away from Osaka is Kobe, a city known for its famous A5 Kobe beef. I cannot tell you how many times I've watched this particular Abroad in Japan video, so I was not missing the opportunity of a lifetime to get some Kobe beef. Now usually when you plan to go to a teppanyaki, which is basically when they cook the beef in front of you, you usually want to make a reservation a few days in advance. I didn't do that, so I was now struggling to find literally any single open reservation. It took me about two hours of research going through Japanese website after Japanese website, Google translating all of them and trying to figure out what was going on, until I finally found an opening on Google. Only issue is, Google usually charges you a fee for making a reservation, or at least some people tell me that, and uh, I didn't get charged. Well, only one way to find out if this is legit. Say hello to Jeff, everyone. We both agreed to go on this endeavor for enlightenment because we love putting meat in our mouths. Jeff's a fantastic creator, by the way, although some of you may already know that. He's also been doing his own Japan vlog, so give those a watch as well. His channel link will be in the description. And a massive thank you to him for allowing me to use his footage, because I am inept at vlogging. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it.
I think we'll be okay though. I think we'll make it on time. Though. Hopefully the next station isn't like a f***ing maze again, dude. Hopefully not. We made it! <laughs> it's so hungry. Yes, sir! Let's go! We got off at the wrong we stop. Oh my f We god. left too early, boys. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Now we're gonna spring. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to be like you saying bolt to that restaurant. Yeah, we're not making it on time. <laughs> <laughs> We're following you now. <laughs> okay, okay. This way? What the f is this? <laughs> what time is it? 11.57? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We don't even know if we have a reservation. We might. Ideally, we do. Hopefully, we do. Look at Kobe. So beautiful. <laughs> Call me a LeBron fan, but I want all this meat. That way. <laughs> oh shit. Did we go past it? I guess. Yes, it's on. It's all right. We can just go down this way and then we can. Or maybe. Backs off! <laughs> no! We just have to wait for that line. We just have to wait for that line. Peak running form. Let's uh, go. Oh. I was there. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, it's this one. This one, no? It's this sign. Right? I think it's this one. This one. Yes. 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 We made it. <laughs> what time is it? Just twelve oh one. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Ah. Thank you. We made it. We made it. I'm stuck in so much. <laughs> <laughs> I need to lie now. I will be Wow. That's the order. Look at this. This is what NCAA and talking about football gets you. <laughs> Let's get the moment of truth here. Ooh. Wait, what? Let's get, let's get the moment of truth. You didn't just see that. Oh, ha, 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 ha. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. I'm fine. I know one mama. Kobe. Me. Kobe. <laughs> Hearing the sizzles of some meat on the grill. Gotta be top five in sounds of all time. We got one more small dish right before the main course and just like everything else, oh man, it was so good.
Don't think this is what the YouTube life gives you. Don't think it. It is not. I've never seen a more beautiful looking piece of meat in my life. I'll add on to your very sus comments past Maxwell. High quality Japanese beef is incredibly tender. I mean, just look at the way this knife just slices through the meat like butter. And just admire the sear and the beautiful shades of red marbling in the middle. I'm sure you could probably save a good amount of money by just having the beef served to you without all this. But sometimes, man, your eyes need to eat too. Mm -hmm. Please enjoy. Arigato zamas. This is really heaven. Here's my five. Shout out to the motherfucker who found this cow, bro. The first guy who found this type of yeah. cow. Like, whatever that cow's name was, Wilfred, Kanabashi, something along the lines of that. God bless you. You lived a good life. Koishi. Koishi. Do I have to go back to the States? I don't want to. I'm sure you don't want to go back to Canada. No. <laughs> This is the last piece right here. You experienced this last piece with me. It looks beautiful. I'm trying to get it in focus. I don't know how to use cameras. All right, that was good enough. Goodbye happiness. I'm never finding it again. After this, nope, nope. It's only downhill from now. <laughs> there's, there's no such thing as bliss anymore after this. No, it's gone already. Our life's <laughs> <f> <laughs> <down>. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this what it feels like to be empty? <laughs> See, I clear my veggies first. Because I needed to save the last two. No, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Because it's emotional. Right. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. We had the Kobe beef. Any last words? I love cow. Back home, I have this one friend who just posts, like, all this good food on her Instagram account. I cannot wait to send her every single picture of, like, the dishes I've had. Exactly. Exactly. I hate her. <laughs> After all the suffering I have to go through, because she posts her stuff at like midnight, when I'm like at my hungriest moment. It's like, oh, here's this delicious like Indian dish. Oh, you, the Kobe beef. To ease the pain, the chefs gave us desserts, and this kiwi red bean mochi. I could cry. Listen, I'm not gonna bullshit you when I say this meal was the most expensive I've ever had. However, if you are in Japan and you want to reach Nirvana, it is 100% worth the price. But now, it was time to say goodbye. <laughs> so long, peak food. <laughs> I returned to Tokyo after, with the knowledge that I will never experience peak happiness with food ever again. But at least some shirt shopping over the next few days could help with the depression. I love North Carolina, I just never want to go back. You guys remember when I made that video about Bonferre Kofu? 
well now I'm here to see a game. Much like Osaka, there's plenty of space outside Kofu Stadium to just have a nice day out with friends and family. There's a park with benches, vending machines, and a wide street filled to the brim with food carts and info tents. It's the simple things that J-League clubs do so well. Because let me tell you, if this was the States, this would either be one street shut down with a single overpriced food cart because blah 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 permits, or a parking lot the size of Kofu. To be fair, Kofu does have a decent sized parking lot, but it's so far out of the way that it's not even really that much of an issue. Plus, you can still get to this game by bus, taxi, whatever. I'm trying to find a shirt um, because this ain't gonna do. We need that Kofu drip. That Kofu drip. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh. It's grub time. Yeah, unfortunately, I lost footage of me trying my delicious bowl of katsudon, so here's basically what my reaction was like. Damn. Oh, wow. Defender, Sam, Onishi Ryotaro. Midfielder, Ju. Hasega Mamotoki. Kofu Zone number 10. For the last three seasons, Motoki Hasegawa has played a crucial role in the midfield for Kofu. Also, the ladies love him. He finished the season with 10 goal contributions, which just earned him a move to a J1 club in Alberex Niigata for next season. Another player with 10 goal contributions was none other than Afro Man himself, that's right, Kazushi Mitsuhira. <laughs> Ah, J-League's finest, Peter Yutaka. 38 years young with 13 goal contributions, the most of any other Kofu player. Since 2015, Peter has been touring all over Japan, and he's a fan favorite anywhere he goes. <laughs> So once again, I can't show you anything on the pitch, but at least you get to hear some of these bangers from the Ultras. Saying that I made a video about these guys like not too long ago. Well, it was like January, and like over there I mentioned Hinchas, uh, the club, the supporters group that literally saved this club right over there. Yutaka just scored the craziest goal, holy sh**. This was a big win for Kofu, not only because it was their last home game of the season, but also because it meant they were in the promotion playoff spot with one game to go. They went on to bottle it the very next week. But who cares about that when you're in the knockouts of the Asian Champions League, eh? Oh, 
Told you, they love this guy. Welcome to the breathtaking Tokyo National Stadium. We went from a 17,000 seater yesterday to a near 55,000 one today. This is the reason that this has all been done. Levain Cup final today. I did say if uh, I get a proper breakfast today, uh, Fukuoka wins, but um, uh... Right, so while I finish this delicious hot dog, how about I quickly explain what the Levain Cup is? In Japan, there's technically two domestic cups. The Emperor's Cup consists of teams that can range from J1 all the way to teams below the first division of prefectural leagues. However, this particular tournament is sanctioned by the Japanese Football Association. On the other hand, the Levain Cup is sanctioned by the J League, and unlike the Emperor's Cup, it only consists of J1 teams from the previous season. Included in that pile, too, are the newly promoted J1 teams from the previous J2 season. 2023's tournament saw Avispa Fukuoka and Uruwa Reds reach the final. Avispa has never won a major domestic trophy, but did just come off reaching the semis in 2022. On the other hand, however, Uruwa is one of the most decorated Japanese clubs. Five J1 titles, eight Emperor's Cups, three Asian Champions Leagues, including the most recent one, and more importantly, four Levain Cups. So today, we would see whether the Kings of Asia or the underdogs of Kyushu would come out on top. But first, more match day food. A $20 burnt slice of pizza dreams of being this goaded. I wanted a Fukuoka shirt, but the lines were too long. However, I did get these blue lock stands and also a new member for the Cool Jacket Club. But enough wasting time. Let's get into that stadium. Oh. Yo, uh, Throughout this trip, I've got to experience some pretty awesome atmospheres, but this took the cake. Audio from my phone doesn't even do this atmosphere a lick of justice, because in person, you could feel the chats reverberating throughout your entire spine. And it only got better once we saw Uruwa's player intros. <laughs> Again, such an incredible atmosphere. This is what happens when you don't have franchises and kill off every local club imaginable MLS. Urawa versus Fukuoka, score predictions. I'm thinking more the Reds take this 4-1. 4-1? 4-1. 4-1, Zach, score predictions. Oh my god. <laughs> I hope everyone has fun. Score predictions. 3-0, Fukuoka. 3-0. Never in doubt. <laughs> Juno Urawa. One no Fukuoka. Vamos! To be fair, I've always been a Fukuoka fan. I hate this. Juno at halftime to Fukuoka. Here I am with a, a fan a since, his, since his childhood. I just want to say, I don't want to say that it's great, but <laughs> the referee has been very uh, deferential to the blue team. <laughs> Uruwa did all they could to come back, but in the end, of Vispa Fukuoka, the underdogs prevailed and won their first ever Levain Cup. And after 90 plus minutes of some of the best atmosphere I've ever seen be created, everyone in red was completely silent. Once again, thank you so much to the J League for inviting me to this game. They were once more so kind enough to give me seats up in the press area, which I've never experienced in my entire life, so that was pretty awesome. Welcome back to Matsuya, everyone. You may be wondering, Maxwell, what grand journey are we going on today? None. I'm sick. Don't worry about me, though. Sensei Joe kept me some company during these trying times. What? 
Yeah! Right, so, uh, while I suffer, how about I talk about what was next for this trip of a lifetime? So far, these last 15 days, I've spent mostly in Tokyo with a little bit of Kansai sprinkled in there. That's cool and all, but I wanted to see even more of the Nation of Wonders. So I give you a poorly drafted up schedule I made three days before I flew to Japan. You wish you were as organized as I am. First, I take a Shinkansen to Kyoto and explore the old capital for about two and a half days. Then we go further down south on another Shinkansen to Fukuoka. Why here? I'll tell you when we get there. After two days spent there, I will then fly all the way up to Sendai to see my team Vigil to Sendai play. Then I'll return via Shinkansen back to Tokyo after the game, have a tiny little break from the hectic travels, and then venture off to a town I won't reveal until later in the video. Whether or not this goes smoothly is all down to my competency, so uh, I'd give it like 60% success rate. <laughs> With Tylenol and Advil working like Shaq and Kobe in my system, it was time to begin my shitly planned city hopping adventure. Kyoto is one of the only Japanese cities that still has its historical architecture preserved because it was spared during World War II. And despite this city being just as popular, it was a breath of fresh air walking around because I could see the stunning machia, or wooden townhouses. Some are restaurants, cafes, or even homes. And because of these types of historic buildings, everywhere you look, everything is just so picturesque. Anyways though, this is all I did on day one. There was the Toji Pagoda, a famous Buddhist temple within walking distance of my hostel. This was originally built in the 9th century, however the structure has been destroyed and rebuilt four times similar to the life cycle of your average Italian club. Then I went to the Museum of Kyoto, but not before seeing another football poster over in Nijo Station. It was only four years ago in a J2 League match when Kyoto Sanga lost 13-1 to Kashiwa Reysol. That's not like Kyoto were even that bad. They finished 8th that season, like two positions off a promotion playoff. Fortunately though, things have looked better as of late for Kyoto Sanga, as they've now been in J1 since 2021. But now it was time to go to sleep and wake up early in the morning to see as many many sites as possible. Yeah, I couldn't sleep until 7am because I coughed the whole night. F*** it, we move though. I saw a place called Colorado Cafe, and as someone who was born in the state of Colorado, it was kind of an obligation to eat here. Should I be using my time wisely considering it's already noon? I mean, yeah, but uh... Go Nuggets. Since the day was pretty much cut in half, I could only visit one notable attraction, so off I went to the Fushimi Inari Taisha. You may not recognize that name, but I promise you've seen this place before, on quite literally every Instagram of anyone who's traveled to Japan. This is quite the hike though, so uh, join me. Comparing this to like the, the actual pictures you see on the internet, this is um, <laughs> this, this is different, I'll tell you that. Oh yeah, while you look at this beautiful view of all of Kyoto, there's a board midway through the hike where you can write up and hang a wish, and someone wrote this. I walked around the famous Gion district after, and it was really extraordinary getting lost in the streets there. It honestly felt like I was in a completely different era of history. And what better way to end off a day full of traditional Japanese history than with muscular macho men, baby! <laughs> Morning, everyone. And it's actually morning this time. Jeff told me about this boat that goes from one side of Kyoto all the way to where all the touristy stuff is, so... Here I am on my last day. Now, I gotta say, though, I have a confession to make. 
I have a massive fear of large bodies of water. Why exactly am I scared of large bodies of water? Why am I exactly scared of being on boats? Uh, simple. I can't swim. And let me tell you, this was no calm river. We were going down rapids. A lot. I can't even lie, man. I was terrified the first few times. I thought I was gonna get thrown into the water or something like that. Like, all my worst fears were coming to my imagination. Over time, though, after the first few rapids and me just kind of... Uh, calming myself down. The fear just dissipated and I got to focus on some beautiful scenery surrounding me. And it was honestly really cool to see Japan in this way, you know, because all I had seen was just going on the streets or going on trains. Again, another breath of fresh air from Kyoto. One of my favorite parts of this trip, by the way, was when we reached this little, like, food boat. So I got these little mochis. Once we reached our final destination, it was now time to go see the monkeys. Fascinating, huh? Then I walked through the famous bamboo forest to cap off the Kyoto adventures. Well, actually, I did see this work of art before I left. This is a club from the fifth division of Italian football. How the hell did this sticker get here? No idea. But Lazio Manda. On the topic of the Kyoto bamboo forest, by the way, if you know famous FM YouTuber, Crew, he actually went to Japan recently. And Kyoto. Ask him about the bamboo forest story. Right. So why did I decide to go to Fukuoka? One of my favorite artists of all time is Hiroshi Nagai, a Japanese artist behind many cover designs for city pop albums in the 1980s. His artwork has been able to encapsulate that idealistic way of life that the sounds of city pop have created. Sounds that have one imagining drives into the sunset in an old convertible, or walks into a city illuminated in vibrant neon, ready to dance the night away. So anyways, there's this cafe in Fukuoka that is Hiroshi Nagai themed. The walls and cups had his art on them, so, you know, I just had to check this place out. Where's the... No. Don't tell me. It was just a limited time event all this time. Uh... Well, at least the cheesecake was delicious. Me being a dumbass aside, I was really glad I came here. It was a really nice and quiet cafe. It's also, of course, got like a little artsy vibe, as you can see. I think the theme changes every other month or something like that. Pretty sure they have like an art gallery somewhere within this cafe. I could be wrong there. But either way, it was still a really cool place to visit. Highly recommend if you just want to relax for a bit. One place you definitely want to go and visit if you're in Fukuoka is Ohori Park. Even though it was cloudy and also rainy, honestly, it was kind of nice being here. It was peaceful. Oh yeah, also, another thing about Fukuoka, you'll notice that the majority of tourists here are probably Korean. That's because Fukuoka is not too far from Busan. <laughs> also, another recommendation for Fukuoka, go to Ramen Stadium. Yes, I didn't just make that name up. It makes sense that it exists here though, because Fukuoka is actually the home of Hakata Ramen, or better known as Tonkatsu Ramen. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yes, sir. <laughs> Completely unexpected, the dynamic Asian YouTuber duo was back. And after some delicious ramen and some wandering around Canal City Mall, another place you definitely should visit, me and Jeff ventured to Hakata Station to get some Japanese cheesecake, as this city is also where the famous chain Uncle Tetsu's originated. However, we instead stumbled into this. I think I can make this overused joke because the video is so damn long. We have officially reached the Christmas arc. I'm just in Japan, Christmas. What the f is my life, man? Oh, you know what? It's not even that cold, but I, I could go for some hot chocolate. I could go for a hot chocolate too. Man. Yeah. Cinnamon ball. Cinnamon donut. ball. Donuts. I could put some balls in my mouth. You can refill this hot chocolate. This is also the most expensive hot chocolate I've ever had in my life. But you get to keep the mug, so right. I think that That's right. that really it's matters. It's 900, yeah. but you get to keep the mug. No, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> well, Jeff, to the YouTube life. Cheers. Cheers. I feel like I could just run away with the love right now. I Thank 
Christmas. When in Japan also, you gotta go to a batting cage, so we did just that. What a beautiful day to play some baseball. <laughs> I actually just juiced up. Come on, Maxwell, home run. I consulted my fellow baseball friends, Derek Jeter, Ichiro. The ghost of Babe Ruth. Nope. Okay, here we go. I guess the ghost of Babe Ruth does not exist. Imagine this two outs, uh, two strikes, and three balls. Bottom of the ninth. Bottom of the ninth as well. Base is loaded. Base is loaded. Down, well. down by three. And I am here to change things. <laughs> We see the dawn of a new day. The beginning of a new age. And the only way to end off a proper day in Fukuoka is at a yatai, which is basically a Japanese food stall. And I came prepared here because there's one single phrase that I made sure to remember on this trip. Osusume onagaishimasu. The recommendation, please. Trust me, if you want to have the best Japanese food at whatever place you're at, use that phrase. Welcome to Sendai, baby, home of Zunda Shakes, Gyutan, the mangaka of Jojo, and Vigolta Sendai, who I was gonna see play J2 champions Machida Zelvia. But that was reserved for the next day, so I recalled what someone said in a video that I've probably watched about 10 times now. When you go straight out to the coast, there's another town called Matsushima. It's one of the most beautiful places you'll ever visit. Definitely on your bucket list. About an hour away by train is one of the three most celebrated scenic sites in Japan. Matsushima. I didn't have much time here, but I knew exactly where I wanted to go. Fukura Island. And you'll see why for yourself in a second. Let me tell you though, do not underestimate Tohoku weather in November. Because while it was pretty cool in Tokyo, it was freezing here. The cold temperatures are bad enough, but that wind is brutal. But hey, when you're seeing breathtaking scenery like this, does it really matter? This is incredible. Genuinely just incredible. On the other side of this bridge is an island that's honestly much bigger than it looks. It was also pretty quiet, which gave me the first opportunity since coming to Japan to slow down my thoughts and just reflect upon everything that's happened so far. I apologize if I keep looping through the same clips over and over, I was pretty much just consumed by the quiet yet calming sounds of nature around me and forgot to record. Three years ago, I was going through a bit of a crisis regarding my channel. I didn't enjoy the content I was creating anymore, the channel's growth was stagnating, and I had no idea what was the next step for me. I started questioning my future as a content creator and quite honestly my own purpose in life. It all just suffocated me every single day. Around that same time as well, an unexpected love entered my life through my YouTube recommendations, and this one definitely wasn't plastic. In one of the most uncertain times of my life, City Pop was there to help me relax for once. Eventually, months later, I did end up switching content, and as some of you may already know, it was really tough in the beginning. Sure, I was having fun making videos, but I couldn't help but feel down because not many people were watching them, and once again, I felt like my childhood dreams of being a YouTuber were slowly coming to a depressing end. But once more during a summer of doubts, I had a way to forget about my troubles. It wasn't City Pop this time. It was a cynical and sarcastic British man showing me the wonders of Japan. Hours on end, whether it was during my lunch breaks or just at night, I would watch so many of his videos, and they really helped me during a time that I felt like everything was just crashing down on me. 
During both of these escapes, however, there was always one thought that would continue to run through my head. Man, it'd be a dream to visit Japan one day. That thought was nothing more than an unreachable dream in my imagination, but it didn't stop me from yearning more and more for an opportunity to make it come true. So to be here now, in the country I didn't think I'd ever be able to explore in my lifetime, it's all so surreal. And I have all of you to thank for making this dream come true. You believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself. And if it wasn't for all the love you showed for a video about a second division Japanese club in Tohoku, the J League would have never contacted me almost two years ago and this all would have never happened. So as we all watch the waves together as the sun sets on this beautiful area, I want to say thank you for helping me live one dream and experience others I never thought even possible. Today's kind of the day that we've all been looking for, especially me, going to a Vigalta Sendai game. But I've had a sore throat for the past like seven days and it's not been fun. But either way, we're here. Advil and Tylenol carrying me throughout this entire trip. Vigalta Sendai play uh, much of a Zelvia. <laughs> it ain't looking good. But um, all I'm hoping is that the atmosphere is just as good as what I remember seeing on those videos because genuinely this is this is a special club and I really want to experience that. Today's also like below 50. Sunday it's it's pretty windy, honestly. Like yesterday was was torture, so I actually got myself a new jacket. Look at that. Fing dripped out as always. But yeah man, I'm just gonna go pull up a family mart, get something real quick, and then go to the stadium. You know, going to Kofu and seeing a game was pretty special, but words couldn't even describe how I felt being here. It was almost 13 years ago in this region that one of the worst tsunamis hit. This was a natural disaster that took from so many people. Livelihoods, friends, family, everything. We often only see the aftermath of it all. Homes and schools destroyed, farmland no longer usable, entire areas evacuated due to nuclear meltdowns, and entire towns completely wiped off the map. Already, those are harrowing images to process, but when you see what these towns once looked like before the tsunami, you start to think about how daily life occurred there. The casual little conversations, the family dinners, the school children who laughed and played around with their imaginations, the community who gathered together to enjoy cultural festivities and holidays. And all that was taken away in a single instance. But despite the helplessness and hopelessness of it all, the survivors of these towns and outsiders wanting to help came together to heal one another and to support efforts of cleanup and rebuilding after such an unimaginable tragedy. And over the years, these towns, once thought to be completely lost, have been reconstructed. And while communities continue to remember and mourn, they can now at least live for those they lost. These are the stories that personify resilience and are the ones that hold such a special place in my heart. Because even in our darkest moments, even when it feels like there's no hope, even when we feel helpless, we must remember that it does get better in the end. We just have to make sure we all keep pushing forward, and remember that we don't have to be doing it alone. And a more specific example of that after the disaster was Vigalta Sendai. Vigalta Stadium served as an emergency shelter while fans provided refuge and assistance to those in need. Players of the team even visited temporary housing areas to have conversations and play football with kids to help the community heal. Continuing their commitment, the club's players make annual visits to affected towns, actively supporting local businesses. Over time though, Vigalta transformed into a symbol of hope for the entire region. From being relegation candidates in the J League, they achieved remarkable success, finishing 4th in 2011 and then securing 2nd in 2012. And this inspiring journey is what made me fall in love with this club and its supporters. And on the topic of encouraging stories in the world of Japanese football, there recently was a devastating earthquake that hit the Noto Peninsula on New Year's Day. There's significant damage, hundreds of lives have been lost, and the once bustling Wajima Morning Market is now just a pile of ashes due to a fire. And a day later, a high school team from Ishikawa played away from home in the All Japan High School Soccer Tournament. Ishikawa was one of the areas affected by the earthquake, so none of the supporters could make a trip to see their team. 
However, in a beautiful showing of solidarity, a group of students from another high school came together wearing yellow trash bags to support the Ishikawa high school team. Again, like I said before in the Vigolta Sendai video, this is why we call it the beautiful game. Okay, let's get back to the vlog now. Look at this bad boy. This is like nearly two years in the making, man. Insane stuff. So we got the American long potatoes. Let's try one of these. Oh my god. Yeah, so there's fries. So this is where it all started, huh? One thing you should know about Vigilta Sendai is that their supporters are like no other in this country. While most club ultras dug into European and South American songs for inspiration, Vigilta's ultras have chants and songs based off of rock songs from the US. Discovering footage of it was cool, but actually being there in person was a blast. <laughs> They also sing Country Roads Take Me Home by John Denver before every game. I mean, this is such a sick club. And since day one of my research, I had always wanted to experience that atmosphere for myself. And it was special. <laughs> We lost 3-1, and it was expected considering Machida were league champions, but man, I can't wait to go back. Okay, so that was my one day in Sendai. Got to finally see Vigota Sendai play, which was incredible. The fans were genuinely incredible. Even when they conceded, usually most of the time, I feel like people just kind of give up, like wait maybe like five minutes. These guys went right into it, chanting for their team, like, Genuinely just incredible stuff. Now I'm going back to Tokyo, staying there for probably like a day. But yeah, anyways, um, hopefully I can find a uh, Shinkansen today. Right, it is a Sunday. Could be a bit busy, but we'll see. I started the day off going to the hospital. Don't worry, I'm fine. You wouldn't believe this though, but uh, I paid less for Japanese healthcare without insurance than American healthcare with insurance. God, I hate my country sometimes. Went to Team Labs after that. Nice little magical experience, quite trippy at times. I will say though, it probably would have been more fun if I went with someone else. Next was Yoyogi Milk Hall. I loved this place. This is literally my entire vibe, like my entire aesthetic just in one. And that was pretty much the end of the night. So how about we reveal that last place now? So a week before I flew to Japan, I was watching the anime ZOM 100. In one episode, the whole gang goes to Kusatsu. And I kind of just thought to myself while watching this episode, man, this looks cool. I should go here. So I did. Kusatsu is one of the most famous hot springs towns in Japan. Now this isn't actually the first hot springs town I've been to. I spent my first semester of college in the small ski town of Steamboat Springs, Colorado. The less said the better. This hot springs town, however, beautiful, stunning, quite honestly, life replenishing. Sam, what is my life? 
Honest to God, what is my life? Let's see this bad boy. Oh my god. The plan for the rest of the night was to be in an onsen bath the moment the clock struck midnight, and it was my birthday in Japan. So after a little bit of gaming, it was time to hit up the onsen. Don't do what I did and jump right in, by the way. Bad idea. <laughs> But what a way to spend my 23rd, eh? Onsen and some Seychelles in the background. Ha! <laughs> no thoughts. Just that one LeBron meme. So this was my last day to do whatever before flying out tomorrow. So I spent pretty much all morning and early afternoon walking around Yukatabe, the waterfalls you're seeing here. I loved the vibes at night, but nothing beats seeing this while a bright sky bathes it. Also, the restaurant and stores are open, so it's just a more active place. It's exciting. For anyone looking for a hot springs town to visit, definitely go to Kusatsu. It is the place to be. I didn't video any of the streets to Yukatabe, but there's so many pictures I have of this wonderful little mountain. Town. Also, another thing, I guess a little tip. Listening to Yumi Arai's Miss Slim or Cobalt Hour album is a vibe when you're in a mountain town. Highly recommend. Anyways, time to go back to Tokyo for one more bit of exploration. Akihabara, aka Electric Town. This is your go-to for any electrics, anime, or maid cafes if you're into that. Originally, I was gonna meet up with Nathan, aka the fat Asian here, to record content at a maid cafe, but I was sick, so maybe next time. I didn't really spend too much time here, mainly because I was just really tired, but I did get this bochi shirt. I also came across this sweatshirt that says, meat is a vaccine, but yeah. That's that. The end of our journey across Japan. Once more, I cannot thank the J League enough for this opportunity of a lifetime. Genuinely, I've never felt a month go by so quickly like it did during this trip. To end this off though, I'm just gonna say some thoughts now that this trip is over, just to help you guys if you're thinking about going to Japan, all that kind of stuff. Firstly, I really hope you enjoyed this vlog and the way I kind of set it up. I really wanted you guys to feel what I felt. It was just kind of a way to give back to you guys for everything you've done for me. So I hope I was able able to slightly achieve that in some way. And, you know, thinking back, I've heard so many people say in the past that they had the best time of their lives in Japan. And even though I was really excited to go, I just made sure not to have high expectations, because can it really be all that? The answer? Absolutely. Everything was so convenient, the food was delicious, I mean just unbelievably good, never had a bad meal, and you can walk around pretty much anywhere and discover something you didn't originally have in your plans. That's the fun part about all of this. Speaking of planning, could I have organized my trip a bit better? Absolutely. But I am more than satisfied with how everything went, and all I did for preparation was remember cities and places I always wanted to visit, read Wikipedia pages, added other tourist attractions on Google Maps, booked a few reservations, and that's it and it was the best time of my life. Really good tip for you guys, by the way, if you don't already, use Google Maps little like saved feature where you can basically add different places to different lists and it'll be marked up on your map. So if you're in an area and you wanna go somewhere else, you can just look at the map and boom, there's a place you wanna go. It's super helpful, makes things so much more organized. You don't have to consider distances or anything when you make your little itinerary or whatever, just look at Google Maps. And I know some of those Japan tourism videos on TikTok and Instagram can be kind of overwhelming. They do this little like gimmick where they're like, you have to do all this or you must do all this. Like just don't stress too much about it. For me, like my outline for a good trip to Japan is very simple. Just have a broad list of cities or places you want to go, the more the better. Have an open mind, and I promise you'll explore more than you could ever imagine. And for anyone interested in going to a game, because you know, th this is a football channel, kind of almost forgot about that. With most games, you can easily just head to the ticket booth a few hours before the match and get a pretty good seat. You can also buy them online just to avoid that hassle. Sometimes the ticket booth will be like a proper ticket office. Sometimes it'll just be a tent. It kind of just depends on where you're watching the game. And for the best experience, 100% get as close to the supporter section as physically possible. I don't care if you don't know a single bit of Japanese. Just use your ears and 
let them guide you. I don't know. Also, 100% go a few hours before a game, not just for the tickets, but for the entire match day experience. Because if you're trying to get all that good food, you gotta get there early, because the lines get ridiculously long very quick. For solo travelers, by the way, uh, choose the hostel life, because it's way cheaper, you can be flexible with it, and you can also meet a lot of really awesome people that are also coming to travel to Japan. By the way, I know some people might get nervous with Japanese public transit and how it looks quite chaotic. But I promise once you go through the flow once or twice, you'll be alright. And again, Google Maps is your best friend here. Also, have as much mochi and also fruit mochi as possible. I didn't really have that much and that's like my only regret. And one more thing, if you're visiting for more than two weeks, I implore you to explore more than just Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. There's so many beautiful and scenic towns up north and south that deserve more attention and would appreciate your company. Everyone says that Japanese people are really nice and that is very much true and if you go to these little smaller towns, honestly, they're even nicer somehow. Actually, sorry, this is the last thing. As someone with social anxiety, I find it pretty difficult to ever ask for help. But trust me, don't be afraid to ask for help here. Anywhere you travel, really, but especially Japan, because again, people here are very nice and extremely helpful. You know, going through this footage for the first time since exploring the country has made me realize just how much I've done. However, there's still so much more I want to explore. So whenever the next time may be, I really want to explore more of Tohoku, especially those towns that continue to rebuild after the tsunami. I think that'd just be really cool. But thank you guys so much for watching if you've reached this point, and yeah, I'll get to the Germany video essay now.